Hello and welcome to the AgriLearn Podcast. I'm your host, Raina Nalao, an emerging full-time commercial farmer, as well as the brand ambassador for the Women and Youth Loan Scheme at the Agricultural Bank of Namibia. Now, today we are in Mariental at the Mariental Piggery, and right across me is Mr. Gideon Gusen. Yep. Mr. Gideon Gusen, thank you so much for joining us on the AgriLearn Podcast. It's a pleasure and thank you for having me. All right. Please be so kind to tell us what is it that you do around here? Okay. Um, as you mentioned, my name is Gideon Goosen. I manage the Namibian group of companies which mm -hmm. consist out of Mariental Piggery, uh, Mariental Abattoir, Aluli Piggery and Jumep Abattoir. Wow. Um, they, both the piggeries are farrow to finish units, so we raise pigs from the sow to the market. Mm -hmm. um, and then obviously we slaughter them ourselves. Mm -hmm. And how's that going for you thus far? Well, You're it's uh, four places. <laughs> um, it's got its challenges, mm -hmm. obviously. Yeah. Um, time is an issue. Mm -hmm. Distance is an issue. Definitely. But uh, at this stage, we're managing. That's good to know. All right, let's get right into it. Pig production. Our first question. How many pigs are raised in Namibia at the moment and which region produces um, the most pigs? Okay, now that's, a, that's really a million dollar question. <laughs> I believe Be it is. Because we don't actually know. Oh. Um, we've been trying from the pork producers of an association of Namibia to try and get the members to join mm -hmm. so that we can build a database. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't been very successful at that. Okay. Um, we started with three members and I think we're on 13 at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's a, a fraction of the amount of pigs that's in the, in the country. Uh, the meat board did, does a survey of a veterinary questionnaire, every health questionnaire, every six months. Yeah. And according to that, uh, they, there are 4,000 respondents that said they've got pigs on the farm. But now this can be one pig or a hundred. Mm -hmm. They don't mention, uh, they don't give a number. Yeah. Um, so obviously there, there's quite a lot more pigs in the country mm -hmm. than what is known. Mm -hmm. And that goes through the formal marketing system. Mm -hmm. uh, Mariental Piggery is the biggest farm in the country, okay. commercial farm. And, um, and we produce about 30, 28 to 30,000 pigs a year. Uh, Alueli is a 550 sow unit and we produce about 14 to 15,000 pigs a year. Mm -hmm. um, so, but there are a lot of small farmers yeah. that does this as a sideline. Mm. It's not their main income. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and they, but we have no idea how many there are. Okay. You just mentioned briefly about the market. Um, let's talk about the, the, the pig market uh, within the country. Uh, what, what's your take on that? What market do you um, target as Mariental Piggery as well as Haluoli? Do you cater for the whole entire country or do you have your specific market and um, the, the pig market generally? Okay, the, the pig market is, is uh, there's quite a lot of scope for, for uh, growth. Mm -hmm. We produce about 45 to 50 percent of the consumption of the country. The rest is imported from South Africa, Europe, Canada, mm -hmm. um, of which South Africa is the biggest exporter. Probably 60 percent of the, of the pork coming into the country comes from South Africa. Mm -hmm. um, as far as we are concerned, we are big producers. Mm -hmm. So we don't do processing. Mm -hmm. We sell to wholesalers okay. um, and to butcheries. Mm -hmm. um, and luckily, until now, I've been able to sell everything. Mm -hmm. So, so we, we, uh, I'm not stuck with pigs at the moment. Yeah. All right. Now, earlier on, you mentioned about you know producers that are uh, pig producers that are out there in the country. Do you know of any commercial farmers? Um, that produce pigs other than um, yourself? Um, no, I don't. No, you don't? I don't. Um, at, look, I, I, what do you consider to be a commercial farm? Uh, mm -hmm. It depends on, on what, what that means. Mm -hmm. um, if it's 
50 sows, mm -hmm. that would to be a commercial farm. Yeah. So there might be a few hundred of them mm -hmm. that we just don't know about. Okay. Now let's look at it from a, a corporate angle. Are there any corporate farms uh, in Namibia? Well, if you if you uh, look at Mariental Piggery and Haluli Piggery, mm -hmm. you, that would be considered a, a corporate farm because um, it's owned by a, a company. Oh, okay. So, um, if the if you're talking about corporate farms where you've got five or six different uh, partners that uh, run the place together, mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for that. Now, let's talk about the importance um, that our local farmers need to understand when it comes to the different types of breeds that they want to farm. Because most of them, they just, you know, I'm going to start a, a, a pig production, for example. But why is it important for them to know the different kinds of breeds before they actually venture into pig production? Okay, um, the breeds are important because it depends on, on your uh, system on your farm okay. in meaning what infrastructure do you have mm -hmm. if you are an, an external farmer or a free range farmer yeah um, you would probably do better mm -hmm. with your more hardier breeds mm -hmm. um, like the deer rock um, it's a it's a, a very hardy brown pig uh -huh. um, but uh, the problem with that is, is there is no breeders in, in Namibia, okay. so you will have to import that. Uh -huh. um, basically what, what we've got on the farm is, is we, we're running uh, three pure lines, uh, land race, large white mm -hmm. and uh, 337. Um, the 337 is a terminal sire, it was bred specifically for, repro for, for production, okay. um, whereas is your large white and your land races mm -hmm. were specifically bred for reproduction. Mm -hmm. um, the downside to these pigs are, are they are finely tuned, mm -hmm. so you have to feed them right to get the performance out of them, mm -hmm. um, and they are white, oh. um, which is obviously not a problem, um, but if you're an and, and free range farmer, you have to take that into account okay. um, because obviously they're going to get sunburn. Mm -hmm. um, so for for bad infrastructure, mm -hmm. you would probably be better off if you use a, a more hardier breed. Um, these things are fine; they they perform like crazy. Mm -hmm. I mean, they if you feed them. They grow, yeah. and if you look after them, they produce. Okay. Um, <clears throat> just to give you an example, at at uh, Aluli at this stage, we are we breeding the F1 gilts here, okay. and we're taking them to to Aluli mm -hmm. um, because I don't want to run two breeders breeding centers. It's it's too expensive, mm -hmm. um, and those gilts are giving me 13.6 born alive on the first litter. Wow. Uh, we're weaning. What, is, what does that mean? So okay, so um, the first time you breed a gilt, mm -hmm. uh, she's going to give you her first litter, obviously. Okay. Um, and the more pigs you can get out of the first litter, mm -hmm. the better a lifetime performance should be. Oh. So um, yeah, so we wean, we're getting six, thirteen point six born alive, and we're wow. weaning twelve and a half pigs per cell. Wow. Um, which is exceptional, considering we do our own AI, mm -hmm. we mix our own feed, yeah. and we're in the middle of nowhere and nothing because <laughs> Aluli is 75 kilometers out of town. Wow, that's that's far. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so the pigs has got the potential, mm -hmm. but you've got to treat them right. You've yeah. got to give them their requirements, mm -hmm. um, and uh, in in this heat of Namibia, yeah. um, it's probably better to, to have uh, controlled environment buildings mm -hmm. where you can keep the temperature uh, relatively low. Mm -hmm. That unfortunately is ex ex extremely expensive. Yeah. Um, so for a small farmer that has 10 or 15 sows or 5 sows for that matter, it's just not viable. Yeah. Um, but uh, on our scales, it, it, it works. Mm -hmm. You mentioned um, 
but white pigs i've never seen white pigs in my life growing up i know of pink pigs okay, so. <laughs> and and brown ones <laughs> the hairy brown ones i've never heard of a white pig before okay so let me rephrase that <laughs> okay uh, they are pink <laughs> oh, okay <laughs> thank you <laughs> All right, Mr. Gusen, let's talk about the recommended so that our local farmers uh, need to start off with when venturing into pig production. What would you consider is the recommended so to start off um, with? Well, your, your recommended sow is always going to be uh, an F1. F1. Now, okay. F1 is a cross between a, a purebred large white or a land race mm -hmm. or basically any purebred sire and mother okay. um, the offspring of that you get the the better heterosis out of the pigs mm -hmm. um, and uh, they just perform much better yeah uh, in namibia at this stage i don't think there is very much of a choice okay um, because as far as i know i'm the only one that's imported pigs we we imported the breeding stock from from canada Okay, wow. Um, a few years ago, uh -huh. and, uh, and we've been uh, propagating them. Mm -hmm. um, it's been incredibly expensive. Sure. Um, the loss on, on production on your pure lines are, are much worse than what it is on the F1s. Wow. Um, just to give you an idea, I'm winning here uh, just under 11, um, and uh, it's just because the pigs are much more temperamental. Mm. So, in short, for a commercial or a small farmer that wants to start farming, mm -hmm. buy the best F1 you can get. Mm -hmm. um, it is expensive, mm -hmm. but it should pay back yeah. in time. Yeah. But then, of course, you have to feed the thing right. You have to look after it. Definitely. Mm. Now, let's talk about our... Um, a, a local farmer that's into let's say poultry production and wants to now diversify and move into pig production would you recommend that you know to 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 the farmer to do that or should they be um, far apart because you know chickens are equally sensitive to pigs um okay see chickens and pigs don't carry the same diseases okay so as long as you've got a fence mm -hmm. and access control between the two units mm -hmm. that's not a problem that's not a problem how far apart would you recommend them to probably 100 150 meters at the least mm -hmm. um, but you have to have access control. You saw the fence around these buildings. Yes. The whole farm is fenced in. Yes. Um, we shower before we go into the piggery. We change clothes. The clothes stays inside the piggery. It's yeah. get washed here and uh, we don't allow the public to come into the farm. Mm -hmm. um, and we have access control on the vehicles. Mm -hmm. They go through a foot dip. Uh, mm -hmm. You have to do that. Mm -hmm. Pigs are, uh, Namibia is a country where, where uh, warthog is uh, endemic mm -hmm. and um, they carry African swine fever. Yes. Um, and if your pigs get it, they are going to die. Yeah. Um, because there's nothing you can do about it. There, there's no vaccine, there's no medication, um, they will die. Mm -hmm. So as long as you can prevent people from traveling between the two units, yeah. no problem whatsoever. Mm -hmm. um, it can be done. Um, I've personally worked on a farm where in South Africa where uh, we had 20,000 layers and a 300 sow unit on a seven hectare farm. Wow. So, so it's doable. It's doable. All right. Thank you for that. Now, how much uh, space should be allocated um, per sow? Um, the latest standard is about two and a half meters. Two and a half meters. Uh, square. Two. Um, okay. And uh, and the reason for that is is that sows need space to move and to um, to function as animals. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, two and a half meters per sow would okay. be would be acceptable. Mm -hmm. But considering the the farming that the extensive farming that's normally done 
in Namibia mm. by, by small farmers, that's yeah. not going to be an issue because they probably have uh, outside camps with shade netting or cloth or buildings. When the sow goes into the furrowing house, she goes into a crate. Mm -hmm. But uh, but the rest of the time she can be outside okay. as long as she doesn't get too badly sunburned. All right. But for intensive farmers? Well, uh, intensive farmers nowadays um, in Europe and uh, basically everywhere, mm -hmm. uh, sour crates is, is considered to be um, an evil. Okay. And um, pigs are not allowed to be crated for more than uh, six weeks mm -hmm. at a time. Okay. And that excludes furrowing. Furrowing. Um, so what they do in, in Europe is they uh, they serve the sow. Mm -hmm. She goes into a crate for the first six weeks of pregnancy. Okay. And then they go into group housing where they have to be two, two and a half meters per, square, per cell. Okay. Uh, and then just before firing, they'll go into the firing house again where they are crated again. Mm -hmm. So that's basically what it's, why they say you have to give the sow space to move. Mm -hmm. All right. Now let's talk about the guest gestation period. What is uh, the gestation period of a sow and how many piglets um, does one have? Okay, um, <clears throat> the gestation period of a sow is uh, three months, okay. three weeks and three days, which translates to 114 days. Three months, three weeks and three days. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> um, with the litter sizes increasing mm -hmm. uh, worldwide, um, they've noticed that uh, the gestation period is becoming longer. Okay. So the average now um, is about 116 days. Mm -hmm. um, and how many pigs can you get anywhere from 3 mm -hmm. to 22, 23? Mm -hmm. um, the average as I said, for Halueli is just under 14 yeah. um, at the moment mm -hmm. for the whole farm now. Yeah. I did say the gilts were 13.6, but the, the average for the farm is just under 14. It's for 13.95 or something like that. Okay. Um, so it really depends on your production system mm -hmm. and um, and yeah, your production system is probably the most important thing. You know, how good do you feed them? How good do you look after them when you serve them? Um, we do 100% AI. Yeah. Uh, so we, we tap the bores, dilute the semen, mm -hmm. um, and then AI the sows with that. Okay. Um, in Europe and um, as even in South Africa, most of the farms get semen from AI centers, mm -hmm. uh, but the distances here and the delivery problems you have with that just makes it impossible. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, okay. it really depends on how good you farm. Okay, why do you have to dilute the semen, if I may ask? Um, well, we've got 10 bores and we do 1,250 sows with that. Oh, okay. Uh, on, a, on a normal unit you would have had, uh, if you did natural uh, breeding, mm -hmm. you would have needed uh, one boar for 20 sows, so you would have had 60 boars here. Wow. Um, so basically what, what you want to put in about 2.5 billion sperm mm -hmm. in a tube of semen, which is 95 moles. Um, and just to utilize the ejaculate from the bore better mm -hmm. you you have to dilute it okay right again by diluting is it water or oh no no because i mean that's what i'm thinking no <laughs> yeah. um yeah, well water is the base okay but uh, is the base? it's it's uh, it's got a, a very um intricate uh, or very specialized uh, diluent in it oh Okay. So we, we mix up the diluent, you have to keep it at uh, 37 degrees mm -hmm. and um, because that's the temperature the semen comes out of the bore. Okay. Um, and if you, if you put it into too hot or too cold water, then the semen gets a shock and, it, and, and they die off. Okay. So 
it's 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 quite an intricate process. Yeah, seems like it. Um, but uh, but it works. All right. Let's talk about the little piglets. Um, cute and very fast. <laughs> How much do they weigh when they are born? And um, by the time um, they are weaned, and uh, what do they weigh? Normally, when they're born, let's let's talk about that. Um, okay, so birth weight is is obviously very important for a commercial farmer. Mm -hmm. The heavier the pig is, the easier it's going to survive. Oh, um, you can imagine it's coming out of the sow now. It it uh, it has to fight with fifteen, sixteen, or. 20 other pigs to mm. get a teat mm. and to get enough milk um, so it's very important that you get pigs born as heavy as possible okay. um, the weight range will be anywhere from 800 grams to 1.3 1.4 maybe 1.5 kilos uh, as the numbers the litter sizes increase mm -hmm. obviously the the piglet weights go down yeah because there is only so much space in the sow's uterus. Mm. Um, so if, if they have to share it with seven other pigs, then mm -hmm. it's, they're going to be heavier. Mm -hmm. If they have to share it with 15 other pigs, it's going to be less. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, they will probably double their weight in the first five days mm -hmm. if the sow produces enough milk. Okay. And then they will weigh anywhere from five and a half to seven and a half eight kilos at 28 days wow which is the weaning age which is winning age yeah. all right now let's talk about the market once again um how much does a pig need to weigh when it goes to the market and how long does it take for it to grow to the market weight okay so your market weight really depends on your market Okay. Um, if if you have a market for a uh, porker that weighs about 60 kilos mm -hmm. then obviously that's where you're going to slaughter them. Okay. Um, we in Namibia are very fortunate in the fact that the, our clients prefer the heavier pigs mm -hmm. so our, our market can basically be 85-90 kilos. Uh -huh. um, unfortunately at Mariental we don't reach that mm -hmm. we run at about 75 kilos mm -hmm. um, because we don't have the space okay uh, it takes about 140 100 and, you know, 140 to 150 days for a pig from birth to get to 72 75 kilos wow. um, at Alueli we've got a little bit more space mm -hmm. so we can take the pig another 10 kilos mm -hmm. before we have to sell it and there we're selling at about 150 to 156 days wow Sure, I didn't know it was that <laughs> that long. <laughs> well, if if you consider, um, it's probably if you compare it to other animals, it's probably not that much long, or it's actually relatively fast. Oh, okay. Um, a sheep is gonna go from birth to six months old. It's gonna weigh probably 20, 25 kilos mm -hmm. compared to uh, to seventy five for a pig in five months. In five months, mm. okay. So, uh, Mr. Gideon, we've heard of um, hormones being used as growth promoters in other um, livestock industry. When it comes to pigs specifically, are there any? Uh, no. Okay. I've uh, farmed with pigs for 30 years mm -hmm. and I've never heard of it, okay. never used it. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, there are industries where it's where it is used, yeah. um, but in Namibia, because we've got EO status, it's not allowed here, mm -hmm. um, and it certainly isn't allowed in or used in pigs. Okay, yeah. all right. Thank you for that. All right, Mr. Gideon, let's talk about the antibiotics. Do pigs um, receive antibiotics, and if they do, why is that? Well, um, this is a, a intensive production system. Mm -hmm. So we produce quite a lot of pigs yeah. um, and when you have a, a high population of anything mm -hmm. you are going to have diseases that comes out and 
you are going to have to treat those pigs yeah. or, or animals, doesn't matter what it is. Yeah. Um, what we however do is, is we use the antibiotics very responsibly mm -hmm. uh, in the sense that we make sure that before we send an animal to the market that yeah. the withdrawal periods has been met. We have registers, we record everything. Wow. Okay. Okay. Now let's talk about the vaccination cycle because pigs are considered to be very sensitive. Could you just take us through briefly uh, when it comes to the vaccination cycle of pigs? Okay. Interestingly, uh, pigs are not sensitive. Oh. They are, <laughs> they are very tough, trust me. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Thank you for clarifying that. But, uh, <laughs> but once again, you've got a, a high population density. Yeah. Um, you are going to have to vaccinate. Yeah. And there's two things that you will have to vaccinate mm -hmm. for. One is E. coli. E. coli, okay. Uh, where you vaccinate the sow mm -hmm. to protect the piglet. Okay. Um, and the other one is uh, erysipelas, parvo, and lepto. Mm -hmm. um, it's two vaccinations that you have to do mm -hmm. uh, if you want to farm at this level. Yeah. The guy that's got two sows on his farm probably is never and they walking around exter in the felt um, mm -hmm. and he obviously feeds them. Mm -hmm. um, is probably not going to have a problem with it. Okay. Um, but then the risk there is, is again is the African swine fever which there is no cure for. Yeah. Now, these two um, vaccines, uh, how often should it um, happen? Um, every cycle. Every cycle. So a sow will furrow 2.35 times a year. Okay. So you want to protect the piglets, so you have to vaccinate the sow before she furrows. Okay. Because she carries over the maternal in antibodies to the to the piglets. They okay. get born without a immune system. Okay. So they get it from her through her milk. Okay. What do pigs consume? Um, okay. Pigs are omnivores. They eat everything. Omnivores? Yeah. Okay. Um, but uh, if you want this, a pig to perform, mm -hmm. you're going to have to give him a balanced diet. Okay. Uh, comparable to the feed that feed master sells. Uh-huh. Um, so you need to supply all the energy requirements, all the protein requirements, plus the vitamins and, min and minerals that it requires. Mm -hmm. um, so on this, on the two farms that we, we manage, mm -hmm. um, we, we have basically four raw materials we use. Okay. Maize, soya, wheat bran, and premix. All right. And when I say premix, that's now all the essential amino acids, all the vitamins, all the minerals. Um, so it's a fully balanced ration. Mm -hmm. um, but if you don't have that, you can feed them anything uh, like uh, lucerne or um, vegetables you can get from the hospital or mm -hmm. as long as you cook that because the risk of infections from various things in that yeah. um, is obviously quite high. Yeah. Um, but you need to understand that if you don't feed them a balanced ration, mm -hmm. you can't expect performance out of the pig. Definitely. Are pigs um, healthier when they're raised outdoors? Um, I, I don't know. I, I have to be honest um, okay. because we are farming with high health animals mm -hmm. so which means they are uh, SPF certified mm -hmm. which means they've got no SPF stands for a specific pathogen free uh -huh. which means they've got no external internal parasites mm -hmm. and they don't have PERS mm -hmm. which is porcine reproductive and respiratory syndrome mm -hmm. Um, and they don't have uh, mycoplasma, okay. which is a lung, lung infection. Lung infection. Um, so whether the pigs are, are healthier outside or inside, I, I would, I would probably think that it's dependent on, on circumstances. Mm -hmm. What are they exposed to? Mm. Um, 
this is in controlled environment, so yeah. they they don't get exposed to external uh, vectors. Mm -hmm. Whereas pigs in the felt um, will probably be exposed to quite a bit of things. Yeah. Um, so, to be honest with you, I don't think I'm qualified to answer that question. Okay. Thank you for your honesty. Is uh, raising pigs sustainable? Yes, definitely. Why would um, you say that? Well, as I mentioned right in the beginning, mm -hmm. we produce about 45% of the consumption of the country. Mm -hmm. um, so there's certainly a market. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the sustainability is under pressure at the moment mm -hmm. because of meat prices. Yeah declining meat prices and increasing feed prices mm -hmm. but we've run this farm from 2009 it was built in 2000 mm -hmm. so just the fact that it's 22 years old must be an indication that it is sustainable definitely All right now apart from bacon which i love we bacon. all do <laughs> What other byproducts come from pigs? Byproducts, manure yeah. and uh, and uh, effluent. Manure and effluent. Yeah. So Could you basic, just explain that. Which is basically the same thing. Um, mm -hmm. The the effluent would be the water wasted, the water for washing, mm -hmm. um, the urine of the pigs, and then obviously the manure. Mm -hmm. uh, at all, we we call that effluent. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so you separate that. Um, okay. The water section can either be used for irrigation mm -hmm. um, as fertilizer, or and the the solid section obviously is uh, can be used for for fertilizer. Wow! And this is for those that um, are into crop and horticulture production. Yeah. yeah. Wow! I honestly didn't know that. Now, because the whole time I've, uh, I've known of the cow manure um, that's used as fertilizer and so forth is interesting. Um, pig manure is, is, is quite a good f uh, fertilizer. Mm -hmm. It's not as good as chicken manure, but mm -hmm. it is it's, it's quite, quite nutrient dense. Okay. Let's talk about information sharing. For somebody that wants to start a pig production, um, where can they source that kind of information that they need to know? Um, yeah, it's uh, the Pork Producers Association of Namibia um, is obviously a good place to start. Mm -hmm. The internet, there's uh, a lot of data on the internet. Yeah, and. Um, and I get quite a lot of calls from small farmers that, that ask advice and mm -hmm. I, I try to, to help wherever I can. Yeah. Um, the NAU, uh, we used to do uh, information days uh, once a year for the small farmers. Mm -hmm. um, but um, with COVID the last three years, we haven't done that. Okay. Um, but we don't normally do a, a yearly uh, information day session that's open to all the big farmers. Okay. Um, so apart from the Pork Association, are there any other associations that protect the interest um, of pig producers in the country? Um, or is there not, just that one? Not that I know of. Okay. So what is the association all about? Well, that's it's a uh, it's a uh, it's under it's under the wings of the NAU. Okay. Um, so we basically give them a mouth to speak to, mm -hmm. through. Um, and then obviously where we can, we try and and, and give assistance. Mr. Gideon, we've uh, come to the end of today's episode. Thank you so much for taking time from your busy schedule to be part of uh, today's episode. I've learned quite a lot. But before we let you go, any final remarks to our farmers out there? Okay, uh, Nilo, it's been a pleasure. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, 
to the people that want to farm pigs out there. Uh, pig farming can be very rewarding. Uh, if you do decide to do that, you have to go for it um, on a full-time basis. You can't run a pig farm on weekends. Um, but having said that, it, it, it really can be rewarding. And I wish you the best of luck. Thank you so much. Well, guys, until then, it's bye-bye. <laughs>